Yay Networks. Hi, wild ones. Welcome back to the Wild Rose Podcast. I'm Whitney Rose. And I'm Connie Daniels. So Whitney, you just got back from uh, hopefully your last confessional. I can't believe you guys are still doing these. Isn't that for, easy? Yeah, yeah. for season well, four that's going on right now, right? Uh-huh. Yep, I just got back from the studio. Do you recognize this look? <laughs> I, I think so. I mean, obviously you're, you changed your outfit, but yeah, the long, I love this look. Yeah, we are, hopefully that was our last one because I mean, we leave to film Reunion this weekend. So, oh. yeah. Oh my gosh. And but they filmed it, that. Very much part of the process that I don't think people really realize is that this is a year round gig for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It's nonstop. Here you go. And um, I, just, I just pounded a bunch of food. Do I have anything in my teeth? <laughs> I can't see it here. I think you're good. <laughs> Production was really sweet and they got me some pho. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. They fed you. They fed <laughs> you me. You probably needed it. Yep. Oh, uh, well, good. One more, one more down. Um, well, hope, I think one it's step last, I, hopefully it's the last one. I mean, we spent the entire time talking about Bermuda. So. Oh. Yeah. I can't wait to get to those episodes. I cannot wait. So yeah. we are recapping episode 10. Um, how many episodes are there? Do you know, Whitney? I don't know. Okay. I honestly I don't know. Like- I, think, I think someone told me, because like on Comcast or whatever, you can see how many are allotted. Mm-hmm. And I think it's around 16. Okay. So we're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. Okay, well, let's dive in. Um, So it starts out, I just have to say, it was so funny to watch Lisa come to your house um, bearing gifts, it looks like, because of after the last episode, her her blow up with um, Miss Monica. Oh, my gosh. Uh, But I had to say it was so funny to watch her try to get into your gate because every single person that tries to get in can't. It opens backwards. (laughs) Yeah, that's on purpose. It keeps people away. (laughs) I think, yeah, I get that. If you're not smart (laughs) enough to figure out how to get through my gate, then you're not smart enough to come to my door. (laughs) Then stay out. (laughs) <laughs> well she eventually figured it out um so you call her out for how she behaved and you i mean you did say you were more upset with her than monica because she's been your friend for a long time and she knows how these these things go she has her own brands she knows how important this stuff is and she totally interrupted it and it was really rude so how how do you think she took that from you do you think she heard you because she got real defensive it seemed like with her voice raising and everything so how do you think she took it lisa does not like it's really hard to talk to lisa about feelings experiences because she or anything that's like borderline criticism even if it's positive criticism right Mm -hmm. um because she takes everything as a personal attack like the fact that she, it's like she, in the moment watching it, it's like, because our relationship has not been the same since that moment. And mm. it's like she takes any feedback as a personal attack and then holds you responsible for her behavior. Mm-hmm. And I honestly, I, I did not expect her. I knew she would, wouldn't like it, but I didn't. No, like I didn't expect her to blow up so like majorly because she is a business owner. And like, could you imagine if it was the launch of Vita Tequila and she was selling bottles there and I stood in the way of her customers? Like they were in my checkout line. I kept having to move them. I mean, you were there. It was insane. It was crazy. And there was zero respect to the fact that it was my business. And Mm -hmm. you know, I've, I've definitely, um, had falling outs at people's events, but mm-hmm. not at people's business events. And you'll right. see coming up that Lisa and I, like, I go to something of Meredith's, but like, mm-hmm. 
like go outside of the room. I don't care that someone's having an argument or a disagreement, but leave the space where the customers are buying. Right, right. That and, you think like, would no be a no-brainer. And people were really frustrated because they didn't get to hear my speech or to hear how Prism came to be. It's like she took my moment to explain. She's like she took my moment to explain how I got here, how I got with Prism, Prism, and made it all about herself. Like mm -hmm. she didn't even shut up for two minutes. I mean, my speech was less than a minute. The sound bath was less than a minute. Right. And right. Like she couldn't even just be quiet long enough and give me the respect for that. So I don't understand why she is so upset that I call her out. It's like she yeah. it's like she expected me to never say anything at all. And I called out Monica too. And Monica was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Like I get so heated in the moment that I didn't even realize I was like that that was happening right then, right? And mm -hmm. whatever. It's it it is what it is, but um Lisa so she, I was just gonna say she goes on to say that she feels like Angie lied to her. Like she started like saying, oh, okay, okay, sure, like I blew up, but I I feel like Angie lied to me. Um, what, what I couldn't like, what is, what does she feel like Angie lied to her about? I, that's what I don't know. I think what Lisa's triggered by is, and again, I'm putting words in Lisa's mouth. If I'm trying to interpret what she was saying in her confessionals and what she said to me at my house, cause what she said mm -hmm. to me at my house was don't be mad at me, be mad at Angie. She started it. Yeah. And and Lisa's point was that she's defended Angie against these rumors because at this point in time, Lisa believes Monica started the rumors, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So remember, because there's like, it's, it goes back and forth of who is it? Is it Meredith or is it Monica? Is it Meredith or is it Monica? Right. And yeah. So I get like that Lisa is frustrated by that, but that is no, like Angie is her girl. And for her to just like, straight up call her a liar that is mm, yeah that I thought that was crazy because yes and she said I don't have a problem with Monica she she said that I'm like oh you don't deny it sure looked like you had a problem huh yeah she has a major problem with Monica and she has from day one it's been very obvious right, right. I love that oh. I love that Lisa tells herself her own stories in her head and she believes them Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. The scene with Heather and uh and Mary at Mary's house. Um I I guess the only thing that I just got stuck on was that inbred comment like she she said or i guess she was getting mad at her for um or upset that some of the stuff that heather put in her book about her wasn't true and heather read the stuff that she had written i think it sounded pretty accurate it was very know. accurate and there wasn't like any specific story or anything like that and i right. was are you so, really gonna call heather inbred you married your step-grandfather it doesn't no, get more inbred than that you had a child <laughs> with a family member <laughs> so exactly such a good point and uh, you know heather i think she took that really well she's she you know straight up asked her do i look inbred and she's like yeah i think you do and then she was like well that hurts my feelings and she goes oh if that bothered you then i'm sorry and heather's like okay yeah i was like wow that was that was a lot um I I just I I never can understand Mary. I just don't. Ned, there's there's no don't waste any brain cells trying. No, no. Um, and by the way, I looked up the stuff on her son. Oh my gosh, crazy. Bad, huh? Yeah. Why is that kid and his I guess wife posting stuff on social? I guess if you're using substances, which it looks like they are, they're posting it that you're do you're. You're not really thinking straight. 
likes are posting yeah. about and it. I, I, yeah, it's it's sad. It makes me feel sad. And I don't know if there's some like underground, you know, there's all these like weird TikTok challenges and, and social media things. I don't get it, but mm -hmm. like there, there's just nothing there that really makes sense. I just feel, I, I, I feel bad for Robert Jr. Yeah. Like to me watching him, it reminds me of certain family members that I have that cry out for help. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it, it right. kind of seems, I and I don't know what kind of mother that Mary was as he grew up. Maybe he had a nanny or what. But he their relation. All we see is their relationship now, and it seems like she's just very disconnected from him and knowing what's going on. And you know, as your kids get older, you kind of don't know as much of what's going on. But um, yeah, a lot going on under her roof. Lots going Not on for sure. Yeah. Yep. yep. Um, okay, so I kind of have a bone to pick with the producers on this one. They filmed Meredith and Seth's podcast, but not ours. Yeah. <laughs> like what? That's because we had our ours, podcast going on longer. <laughs> that's because ours is way too normal. Mm, probably. And like yeah. there's nothing normal about Seth and his podcast. Yeah, you're right. And I guess it gives them more um Give well, them more what, of a storyline. Yeah, I was going to say, but what else would they really film? So. I don't know. I don't know. Um, and it looks like at, when they showed what's coming up, you and Jay go on their podcast. I think I remember you telling me that you guys did go on there. So I'm, did, yeah. I'm excited to see what they show of, of that episode. Me too, because that was the most confusing podcast I've ever recorded. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> So I'm guessing, I mean, you guys are getting along well enough that she invites you to do that with them. I mean, at that point in time, yeah, we were, it, it, you'll see, it kind of builds back up. Like, mm -hmm. I think we, once we had that um, conversation at uh, cross country skiing, mm -hmm. like things changed for us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, she did say one thing that I thought, and tell me if I'm wrong, but she said that when they did their post nap is, you know, when she was, it was after they were married and she was moving and with the kids and everything, but she, she said divorce is not favorable for women in Utah, but I always thought that it was more favorable for women in Utah That's than what men. I've, I've never heard that. Yeah. I, I've never actually heard that ever. In yeah, fact, never. The the men actually, it's more favorable for women here. Yeah. We, we know a lot of people who have been divorced here. I mean, Justin has paid alimony and child support here and I can attest to it's more favorable for women. Mm -hmm. and yeah, cause I, I, because I, I, by nature, women stay home more here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the law does and should protect them, but maybe it was different back then, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I haven't ever heard that. I've always heard there are father's advocates, um, attorneys for men, but uh -huh. I don't know. Yeah. I just thought that was interesting. I didn't look it up or anything. So, um, it's opposite of what we've heard and know to be true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And I don't know if she was saying that as an excuse to get the post nut because it's not favorable. So she's trying to protect herself. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe she's, I don't know. I don't know. I just thought that was interesting. Um, okay, so Brie and her mom. So Brie, <laughs> Brie's mom shows up with her car to give her her car back. Saying she's Monica? bringing bear gifts. Oh, not Brie. Brie. Why did I say Brie? I, yeah, I've been watching Selling Sunset, too, at the same time. Okay, scratch oh, that. Yes. <laughs> uh, oh, my gosh. Monica. Monica. Monica's mom comes and brings the car back, says she's com coming bearing gifts, which obviously it's not a gift. Um, but I'm just curious what you think. I mean, so she makes her mom walk home. Do you really think she made her mom walk home in the cold? Or do yeah. you think that's okay? Obviously, they have something, they have their issues. It's, um, it's pretty toxic, but. Do you think that, I don't know, I did, that part I just felt like it was a bit like they were turning the theatrics on again. 
Yeah, I mean, I feel like I've said it over and over and over. Like, I, I feel like mm -hmm. they are actresses. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was like, in that moment, I'm like, okay, do you really think that she made her mom walk home in the cold? I don't know. <laughs> and if I'm wrong, Linda, you are, if you're not an actress and you're not turning on the theatrics, then my apologies, you deserve your own show because you are very theatrical. <laughs> she does. She does. Um, it seems like that's her goal. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, then we get to Heather's scene where Heather has her book signing, little book club um, get together thing that she did and brings back the choir and all that. So I did notice that you weren't there. Yes. Um, so how come you were, were at this event? Um, or... well, remember the week prior, I had two large events mm -hmm. and I just wasn't feeling well. My body, like I had gotten a cold, mm -hmm. and, um, Justin was out of town and I just felt like I needed to stay home and rest. Um, yeah. and this was, it was a really rough time with Sherry. Mm -hmm. Um, but no, really it's because I was sick and when we're filming and all that, like it's not kosher to come around. Like we have very strict, I got like COVID tested and everything. I did not have COVID, but we just made a decision. It was best that I stay home. And honestly, I was sad because I, I wanted to show up for Heather and support mm -hmm. her because we've had so much drama around the book. Mm -hmm. But hindsight, I'm glad I didn't go because I have never seen a more fake, phony flip-flop in my entire life of Lisa and Heather. Holy <laughs> shit. Heather going after Jack's mission all season, and now Lisa Barlow's up there rapping, and they're supporting each other. And, okay, so glad they're supporting each other. But when and where did we miss the flip-flop you're right i that kind and of threw me off too Heather chooses to read a story from her book that's about how much she loved running into a missionary and then she's right. given the hell for sending her son on a mission like yeah i'm glad i wasn't there because i probably would have caused a ruckus and it probably would have set heather and i back a few steps Yes, I also thought that that really kind of uh, she contradicts herself quite a bit there. And Ooh. it just it makes me just feel like she's still very conflicted. That um, she, you know, and actually Mary even says in her confessional that, you know, Heather, it seems like Heather wants it all. She wants to have her church and her community, but yet she's so against all of it, too. But it's like she yeah. wants it, but she doesn't want it. And, and maybe she wants that part of it. I just think she I, wants I can get the that, money but. from her book. Like she wants the book sales, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it is confusing. It's very confusing leave, leaving a high demand religion. Mm -hmm. And it's going to take Heather quite some time to figure out where she stands. And I, that's not so much what I'm, I'm um, like gagging at. I'm gagging at the amount of times that Heather brought up Jack's mission to me and called me a hypocrite for supporting Lisa with it. And then right here we are, like, I wanna know, that's what, I, I have a lot of questions for reunion about that because are you kidding me? Like I had to, Heather and I had a dinner and we haven't seen it. I don't know if it will air, if we haven't seen it yet, but mm -hmm. like I like gagged at how many times Heather has come after me for Jack's mission and it's none of our business. And so for her to be like, I support Jack. I just wanted to be a part of it. It's like bullshit. When did you change your mind? Exactly. I think that exactly. she just really wants Lisa to like her and Lisa like Lisa was on the outs with me and Angie. And so now Lisa's liking Heather and Heather loves being loved by Lisa. Right. Right. <laughs> this is what I think. Can I just say though, like, you know, I was I was equally upset with Monica, um, but they uh, for like the Prism event, you know. But mm -hmm. um, Monica and Angie actually Facetimed me from the event, 
and they were like, you are not going to believe this. And they like showed me Lisa and Heather all over each other. And I was like, what the fuck? And Monica goes, I came for Heather's book reading. I didn't come to listen to Lisa Barlow sing. I want my money back. And like, <laughs> even though Angie and I like, where I, I wasn't okay, completely okay with Monica at this point, I was laughing because I'm like, you no truer words said. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> she was actually, that made me laugh when she said that. And I remember when they FaceTimed me and it was just like, what is going on? Right. Like, this is a cartoon. <laughs> this is not real life. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I, yeah. I think the last thing I wanted to hear was um, Lisa singing. What was that song again? <laughs> she sings their Christmas song. Away in I a manger. Can't. Away in a manger. I don't know. I can't. I can't. Okay. Well. I just think that we'll see how long this little friendship lasts, but they both just love to be loved by each other. And their relationship only works when one of them is on the outs with the other people. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. In fact, that's how all of Lisa's friendships work. Yeah. I'm starting to see that. Actually, yeah. It's starting to that. become pretty obvious, huh? Mm hmm So Yes. Well, I, I did have to bring up one thing interesting that Monica brings up in her confessional. She starts to relate to... Um, the missionaries and how she says, you know, her and her mom used to have missionaries over for dinners and they'd sign up for all of that. But, um, and she kind of looked at them like big brothers or she said something like that. But yeah, I, if correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think missionaries can go to single women's houses for dinner. Yeah. I like don't the, the men missionaries. I think that's a rule yeah. unless they've changed it. I don't because know. the well, the rules change a lot, but I don't know. I just kind of thought, hmm, that's interesting. I don't know. That would mean that there would have to be a man in the house for sure. Yeah. 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 And I don't think her mom, her mom's usually single, right? I mean. Yeah. Um, well, maybe there was a guy waiting for her in the car. Maybe they. Yeah. <laughs> maybe they counted that. Yeah. <laughs> Could have been. Um Okay, so I think it, it kind of wraps up with Angie talking to Meredith finally and getting this half ass apology that was so not genuine whatsoever. And yeah, I was just like, oh, wow. I mean, I would have rather had her walk away from me again than give me that kind of a passive aggressive apology. Yeah, well, there's more to come. I just, yeah, I was recording about this today so oh yeah there's more to come but yeah you're right it's like why even waste the breath if, i mean at this point angie needs to stop trying i don't think she's gonna get the apology that she's looking for no no i think that yeah meredith made that pretty clear yeah definitely and um heather brings up a book number two that she's going to start. I, I did have to say, I think her girls gave her really good advice when they said, um, or at least, yeah, one of her daughters said, said, um, and forgive me, I can, I'm the worst with names, so I can't remember the girls' names. Um, Belle and Georgia. Okay, is Georgia the older? One's off to college. Ashley. And Okay, Ashley, and then, okay. Georgia, so I, Annabelle. Was it? Georgia and Annabelle. Is Annabelle the younger? Yeah. Okay. So Georgia brings that to her. She says, you know, they say that they're okay with a book number two. Um, but she says, Georgia says, yeah, I'm good with it. As long as it comes from a place of healing and not just to get back at the church. And I thought, you know, that's, I think that's great advice for her. You know, if it, if it is part of her healing and figuring things out and, um, I think that's great, but if she's just going to sit and rip on the church, I just, there's plenty of literature and things like that out there. I, I just don't think it'd make well, an her, interesting book number her, two. Her first book wasn't even like that. Her first book was a housewife, housewife memoir. Uh-huh. So I don't know where. Have that you read her book? Yeah, I have. You read it? 
most of it. Good. Yeah. Yeah, and that pretty much wraps cheers. up. Yeah, cheers to yeah. Heather's book. Well, I'm excited to see what it's about. Yeah. Well, I know I'm gonna get out. I'm actually gonna read her first book. I am. I'm gonna yeah. read it. Because now I'm no. curious about the second book, what what else she has coming up. Yep. All right. So. Well, thank you to everyone. We hope you're still loving these um, little housewife recaps. I know people DM me all the time and they're enjoying them. So if ever there's anything that you want to know more about um, from episodes that we've covered or things coming up, let us know. And I will do my best to answer it. <laughs> without getting in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. And well, don't forget, everyone. eat you. Stay wild. Yay Networks.